Greetings, my name is Asif Kabani and I'm an MBA and today's of my topic is that I'm going to be sharing the report on the sustainable development which was released in 2023 uh, by the United Nations and other partners and governments around the world so I hope you will like it. This will take a little bit more time today because the report is very big, it's about uh, 500 plus pages and there is uh, data that you need to explore. So let's start and enjoy this report. So the firstly, please note that the all the, this publication is protected uh, by the author and the publisher, which is United Nations, its partners who have done this report. I'm just sharing this report for the academic purposes. So please do not do any recordings or share on any social media. Thank you very much for your understanding. And if you need to use any other part of the report, please contact the relevant stakeholders. So the report is a, indeed a very good report. It gives a very nice executive summary about the midpoint, which we call it now, of the Sustainable Development Agenda 2030. And as we can see that all the SDGs are seriously, seriously off the track from 2015 to 2019. The world has made some progress on the SDG, although this was already very, very insufficient to achieve these goals. And since the outbreak of the pandemic in 2020, the other crisis, the SDC progress has been stalled globally. So this is a very important concern that we have to look at it, that how we're going to achieve this agenda. The report is divided into five chapters. The first chapter is about how to achieve the sustainable development goal and there is a framework of sustainable development network that we use i also mentor in some of these programs as well so the first uh, concern here is that uh, the sdg is really facing a headwind despite significant effort in some places the governments and countries they have all fallen short in integrating the sdgs into their national policies public investments and moreover due to the polarization the geopolitical conflicts that also hinders the global cooperation needed to achieve the sustainable development goals however civil society including academic institutions are becoming more more proactive and we are seeing more startups and young entrepreneurs coming from the us uk europe nordics and including south south cooperation are trying to solve these problems even with the political tension there is an international financial crisis in making also. So there is a lot of challenges uh, right now in, when we talk about the global challenges of global savings for the SDGs and investment that needs to scale this work. So I can show you in the third part that uh, second part, uh, the second part of the report which focuses on the SDG index and the dashboard. So you can see that all the goals are either red or yellow. None of them are green because the SDG index and the dashboard tracks the annual progress of all 193 UN member states. So you can see this is a box one. They have very nice information of box and maps in the report that I will discuss in future as well in further report. But at the midpoint, however, you can see they, they are all off track, as I mentioned before as well. So this is, is, this is really alarming that all the SDGs are off the track despite improving on an average half point a year basis. But as I told you that between 2015, 2019, which was already very slow progress and then the outbreak of pandemic created more crisis. But let's move to the third part of the report. The third part of the report discusses the government efforts to the commitment of the SDGs. So if you are new here, please join and subscribe and connect with me on the LinkedIn, our resource center and the teams. So these are the 17 SDGs goal that you are seeing in the screen. Goal number one is poverty. Goal number four is education. Goal number uh, 13 is climate change. So you may have different interests in different goals. Maybe it can be water, it can be education, it can be health. Goal number three is health. So the most important part uh, of any development or sustainable development process is that the government efforts and the commitment to the SDGs is very important because it requires a lot of long-term changes and global cooperation and long-term investment plans for essential and national success in meeting this goal. Uh, there is some speculations that when the SDG agenda was adopted that the old and the gold target would be achieved 
at their midpoint however the midpoint is here and none of them has been achieved and we are just struggling however by 2023 one would expect that most of the countries have implemented uh, uh, policies regulation framework compatible to achieving the sustainable development goals in the transition it would also expected the countries would have at least one documented uh, evidence that their plans in achieving the sustainable development goals is voluntary but some countries are doing voluntary national reviews and presenting it to the united nation but to understand that the, how the commitment is going to be fulfilled is, is is very clear in the united nation charter okay but then there comes a uh, political leadership and institution coordination for the sdgs which some of the countries have done it it's a very good thing that they have started doing it but finally these policies has to integrate in their social policies and pathways as well so as a governance specialist uh, as a mentor i always say that you need to have a policy provision implementation and finances to do it if you don't have any of these ones so the, the cycle of development doesn't work because you can only make policies but you don't have a provision in your policies that how people will implement it it will not work so for to implement it you need to develop the policies you need to give them a provision so they can implement it and then you need to give them finances in the budget it's it's all government that's why the cop takes is successful they don't just give you the assignment but they always give you the resources along with this one so now we can discuss this further more in the rankings as well let me go to the next slide here you can see we have learned a lot of lessons despite the fact we are halfway through much is still needed okay and we cannot do it without having a proper data i've been telling on this in my lectures that uh, please take decision based on the data rather than having a decision then you try to find the data to justify your decision it doesn't work like that so first is that uh, we are halfway and the data is showing that we have not done enough to do it so we need to strengthen our data and the methodologies underlining the sdg indicators and in the frameworks adopted by the united nation general assembly on the 25th of september 2015 which clearly indicates that how we're going to be transforming our world agenda 2030 is the agenda for the sustainable development it also recognizes that the or at the start in the importance of closely monitoring the progress of all the goals so this section of the report basically dedicated to the sdg monitoring it notes how our governments have primary responsibility to follow up and review at the national level at the regional level at the global level in relation to the progress made in implementing the goals and the target over coming 15 years the united nations in 2015 clearly in the resolution also called for the broader measure to implement the progresses of it through the gdps as well now let's discuss uh, this lesson learnings in light of the methodology how it was developed so to develop any report we need some kind of a methodology so we all agree on this one so the sustainable development report 2023 provides an assessment of the progress made towards sustainable development goals by all the member states the reports include sdg index in which scores are presented on the scale of 0 to 100 and it can be interpreted as a percentage towards the optimal sdg performance therefore there's a difference between 100 and the country sdg index scores in a distance and percentage point that must overcome the performance the same basket of the indicators are the performance thresholds as well are used by for the all the countries to generate comparable analysis and the rankings so now uh, after reading the report you must also explore the data for your own self that how the world is performing how your country is performing and how your other country where you are either studying living or working so you can see this one so let's look at one of the data here so this is one of the data or the maps that we see the overall scores that how these countries have performed they look very nice that most of the countries are contributing to the data and the collections of the data as well however there is a big concern that all this data that we are sharing here is may not be as a good because for example the quality of education so if you look at the quality education data you can see there are very very few countries that are green 
and some people may not agree that they're giving the right data but for example there is one side is the canada and the other side is the russia it's going to be a very big debate on this one but the other data you can see is clean water and sanitation so no country in the world with the billions and trillions of dollars of budget has been able to achieve this data then we move to another data which we look at the climate action there are some countries in africa and asia regions who have achieved this climate action but people will also disagree with this data as well so let's look at the uh, the top countries because all this data is debatable as i said like you can look at the data that some people will say that but how can the india and the african countries which are saying that they have achieved the climate action but they have so much of pollutions and everything so so all this data is debatable that's why i keep the small so, so i also have very very important questions that what is that but let's look at the overall rankings so there are many countries in the world who perform and has been performing very well are so this is ranking the Finland tops number one with the 86.76%, the Sweden is 85.9%, Denmark 85.6%. So most of the Scandinavian countries usually perform very well because they have a small number of population and large number of resources to achieve these goals and they are major contributors and donors to the sustainable development goals as well. Then you can see we have Germany, Austria, France, Norway and uh, the list goes on, Poland, Estonia and then uh finally i put the 11th one in the united kingdom which has been after brexit has been working very very hard so you have to analyze this report so by your own self that what the data is showing and what you believe in so take your time to study all this data i want to share one more slide here before we go uh, that uh, there are many reports that has been published uh, over the years this is the 2023 20, uh, report we have 2022 report we teach this reports uh, in our national leadership programs as well as the international system development resource center for people who are developing their own startups or running their own businesses to understand how this global development and sustainable takes place sustainable development takes place so these are the some of the global reports that you see on the screens you should uh, download it and read it uh, it will give you information but along that one please also report some of the regional edition of the reports uh, so you can understand how the g20 works and how the regional reports work and there are sub national editions of reports as well they will give you so i will have put the link here so you can download these reports and databases from the sdgindex.org and if you are more interested in learning about these reports and programs so please feel free to you are most welcome to join our next generation leadership program for yourself and for your teams to learn about the united nations sustainable development goals if you are making your own startup or you're doing research or a phd we would we help you mentor you provide you some services training and support for yourself and your team and then feel free to connect to me on the linkedin and subscribe to this channel at the youtube or any other platforms that you are following and you are finally most welcome to come and join us at the international city management resource center geneva this is our linkedin page and you can visit the resource center as well thank you very much for your time and i hope you will enjoy this one and please uh, feel free to share subscribe connect and uh, comment on the report as well i hope to see you in the next report as well thank you very much uh, and i hope you will have a good time and you will have a good learning as well on these reports and hope to see you in the next video.